American Soybean Association, and I greet our um, members of the Senegalese government, of uh, multilateral institutions, uh, uh, members from other governments in uh, West Africa, uh, the private sector, uh, those of you uh, joining us from the private sector, uh, non-governmental organizations, and of course our American uh, visitors uh, who've come from far to uh, be with you today. This conference was organized by our friends at the uh, USDA uh, uh, in Dakar, as well as uh, our organization and four other commodity groups. Um, we have Alaska Seafood Marketing, uh, USP uh, uh, Dry Pea and Lentil uh, Association Council, sorry, uh, Dry Bean uh, Council, and also the American Peanut Council. And because they won't be presenting today, could you raise your hands, uh, you cooperators? We call these organizations, these commodity groups, cooperators, so people can see who they are, those that you weren't here with us yesterday. So these are the people that uh, are with the products outside. These are the people that you can talk to about utilization of these products, uh, uh, acquisition of these products, trade in these products. Um, this is, as I think uh, Joshua mentioned uh, in French, uh, uh, the, the Trade, Food Technology, and Nutrition Conference. Um, we appreciate our uh, uh, relationship with the USDA. Uh, our commodity group's relationship with the USDA is one of the oldest public-private partnerships uh, uh, in the, uh, the states and around the world where our commodity groups work with uh, offices like Dakar, Accra, uh, Lagos, Pretoria, all represented here today. Could you raise your hands, uh, FAS people, uh, you know, from uh, from around Africa again, so that people who weren't here yesterday can uh, identify our collaborators and our, our friends uh, in this public-private partnership. Uh, the Senegalese hospitality, uh, but we have uh, also uh, people from organizations and businesses uh, from the Cote d'Ivoire, from Ghana, from Nigeria, from Congo Brazzaville, from Kenya, and from Uganda too. So I hope, uh, you know, this is a small group today. I hope you will take the opportunity to get to know uh, your associates, uh, not only here in Senegal, but uh, in, uh, in other countries. Yesterday, yesterday was about trade. Yesterday was about uh, buying and selling and developing products and understanding tariffs and, uh, and taxes, and above all, looking at consumers understanding consumers because uh, uh, at the end of the day, trade is putting buyer and seller together with a value proposition. But towards the end of the day, I think it was quite right and uh, uh, very important that the theme of food security became, became forward. And um, I'd like to uh, uh, dive into that just briefly here a minute. Um, the U.S. government has, uh, uh, since last year, launched a, a global food security strategy. And I think it's very important to remember uh, there's certain factors in food security. There's availability. Some people call it access. There's affordability of the food. You know the food can be available, but if you can't afford it, it's not going to be very useful to you as a consumer. Um, the global uh, food security strategy calls the next thing utilization. So utilization, how's the food used? How's it cooked? What quality is it? Is it safe? Um, and very important to us, very important to us uh, is under utilization is the acceptability. Is the food tasty? You know, uh, people don't want to eat something that doesn't taste good. And especially if they're paying with their own money, acceptability is very important. And the last thing, the last thing I think, which is a new idea for food security, Josh, and something I think is very important that they bring forward in the strategy is stability. 
You know, stability can mean many things. In my mind, what they're talking about stability is relating back to access. Is it there? Is there stability of supply? Is there hopefully some kind of stability in price? And, and we believe that trade, and especially international trade, we heard a lot yesterday about intra-regional trade, which is very good, very important. Senegalese products going to uh, other Sahelian countries. Nigerian products maybe coming to Senegal. Trade is a way to maintain stability and avoid perhaps some of the fluctuations in uh, price and supply. So, so these are the factors in uh, food security, and I think we will be diving into those today, because today's conference, uh, I think, will focus and have a theme of uh, food security. Now, yesterday, this theme started to come forward. We heard about it. We will hear more today about undernutrition, about malnutrition. Um, they aren't really the same thing. You know, there's malnutrition, clinical. I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about that. But there's also this chronic undernutrition people talk about. People aren't getting enough of the right food. They might get enough food. They might not um, uh, be starving, but they don't get enough of the right nutrients. And we have seen, and we can show you, that one of those key nutrients people don't get enough of is protein. And the protein deficiency in Africa in Senegal, of course, Senegal is doing a good job. I learned yesterday, Senegal is doing a good job lowering their stunting rate. But uh, they, uh, other countries in Africa, high stunting rates. Um, South Asia, Southeast Asia, you know, many countries, Latin America, many countries face the same problem with the protein deficiency. And, and how do we address that? Now, one idea started to come forward yesterday, I think is very important. Most people in the world buy their own food. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. People trade, people buy their food, and they, they, as they get more money, they spend more money on better food, and that often means more protein. But, but there will always be some people that can't buy enough food. There will always be people that can't buy enough of the right food. This is true in the United States. This is true in the United States. The United States and the U.S. government uh, run programs run by the USDA. They spend billions of dollars feeding American school kids, feeding women uh, in, uh, who have small children, pregnant women. We have our WIC programs in the United States. We, we address food security in our country, and we have programs that help address food security internationally, too. And we're going to hear about some of those uh, a little later. So, so if we accept, if we accept the notion that there are always going to be some people that need assistance, some people that need food, how do we get that to them? The private sector can help. It is not the private, as we said yesterday, it's not the private sector's responsibility to feed everybody. It's not possible. But there are organizations governments, multilateral organizations, private foundations that can help fill those gaps. And we'll be talking about some of that. But at the end of the day, as we said yesterday, and this is, uh, 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 this is the, w the word I'd like to close my remarks with. I learned it yesterday in French. Um, you know, the word is uh, solution durable. It's, it's, it's a sustainable solution to the question of undernutrition. And, and I think in this context, what we're talking about sustainable is, can it go on year to year to year, even if the international program that brought the food to begin with ends? How do we see that program continue? How do we see the local uh, 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 efforts, the local organizations, the local private sector, um, uh, step up and, and uh, make sure that the food is, okay, there's going to be a test later, accessible, available, affordable, and acceptable. Utilizable. All right, utilizable. I, I like acceptable, but utilizable. No, Nina is absolutely right. If we're sticking with the U.S. government uh, uh, strategy, it's uh, utilizable. All right. So, 
So um, I'd like to close uh, my re opening remarks. Um, we are a smaller group today. We will try to, to program time into the uh, uh, presentations for questions and answers. The dialogue got very good yesterday. It was good to have uh, two-way dialogue, and I think with this kind of group, uh, we can have uh, uh, some dialogue. I would encourage, I would encourage, as we talk about these things, to keep in mind that not only do we have the technical consultants that you are about to hear from now uh, available for private consultations, either in the context of this conference or later this afternoon or even tomorrow, but we also have opportunities and time for private discussions with the other commodity groups that have, that have the products and the know-how and the contacts and the links with our government friends uh, to, uh, to, again, help you find uh, solution durable, uh, sustainable solutions to, to, to the challenge of making sure there's enough uh, good uh, quality and nutritious food uh, for all the consumers. So thank you uh, for coming, and I think at this point we will go to the first session, uh, which is um, uh, on the program, a presentation from our nutritionist. You want to pull up the uh, present Cade's presentation? We're going to get ready to go. Cade, you all mic'd up? Okay. So I've worked with Cade for many years. Uh, we started first working in Southern Africa on some projects. Uh, Cade is a degreed nutritionist. By the way, I'm not going to read these bios. Uh, you can read them much faster than I. Uh, they're in your packets. Um, but Cade has been working in many countries around the world, especially in Africa. She's got a lot of field experience, and uh, she uh, uh, she uh, is our protein and nutrition expert. So uh, without further ado, we're going to turn it over to uh, Cade Fields Gardner of 